Hi, welcome back to Spoons and Stuff. Today's video is going to start with a couple of updates. Uh, one good one, one not so good. Uh, start with a not so good, the little firebelly toads that I've been trying to raise. Um, I've had quite a few die recently. I'm down to 11 now, and I'm not sure one of them's going to last much longer, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, it's one of those things. It's the part of the hobby that it's crap, basically. But um, you always question yourself. You always think, is there something I could have done differently, done better, but it's natural selection at the end of the day. This is what happens in the wild. That's why things like our tarantulas, the toads, animals like that have hundreds of babies when they do breed because 75% of them, maybe even more, are going to die. By having that many babies, there's a bigger chance of at least some surviving. So this is what's happening here. And I'm just hoping that I have a few survive at least. You know, the, the rest of them do look quite happy and healthy, but I've had a couple of the bigger ones die recently, so you never can tell. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's where we are with the little toads at the moment. I'll keep you updated and hopefully there won't be any more deaths. The, uh, the second update, <clears throat> as you can probably see from behind me, I've had a bit of a change around. I wanted to bring the, to uh, the toads the geckos in here rather than the tarantulas because they come out at night you guarantee they'll be out every night they'll be wandering around their enclosure they're more visually stimulating if you like so uh yeah i've moved them around thanks to jennifer for coming and helping me move these dirty great enclosures around because they're not the easiest things to manhandle especially these bioactive ones because they weigh a ton but uh yeah the tarantulas you can probably see just behind me the majority of them are in the other room now I thought if I gave them a bit of a darker room, they might come out more, but no. We all know what our tarantulas are like. They are a law unto themselves. But uh, I've still got some more of them up on the shelf here. Some down on the right of me here, but uh, yeah, I bought the geckos in just so I think the enclosures are nicer as well. Which brings me nicely on to uh, what today's video is all about. I've wanted to move these two female gargoyle geckos into a new enclosure but i wanted to make a bioactive one I, I recently put them in together and they get on fine they were actually born in the same clutch i just separated them when they were slightly younger because as is always the case one tries to dominate the other and there was a little bit of fighting and i was worried about losing limbs which does happen with these but now they're a little bit older they seem to have settled down they don't fight they don't attack each other so this all all good so uh, yeah, I wanted to move them into a new enclosure, a new bioactive enclosure, and I wanted to film the process of how I do it. Uh, this isn't a definitive how-to guide, this is just how I build my enclosures. And this one's a little bit different to what I've done before as well, so I'm experimenting as I do this. But uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is take you step by step through all the little processes I do and how I build up my enclosures. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. Um, I've actually started the whole process and like a numpty forgot to record the first bit, but I'll go through what I've done. The enclosures there, standing upright. I've got a nice big piece of cork bark sort of sweeping up from one corner to the other and it's held in place if I get a little bit closer. It's actually held in place by expanding foam. It's quite easy to do actually. I'll go through the foaming process in a bit, but it's literally held at the base there, held at the top. And as you can see, you can actually move the whole enclosure just by gripping the uh, cork bar. So it's a nice, it's a nice strong fix really. This big slit you can see up here, I'm not sure whether to open that out for a bit, just to give the gecko a bit more option to sort of climb out in and out of the slot i mean this bit up the top here is open and uh just get a better shot on that this bit up the top here is open i'm actually going to carve that foam back the thing with expanding foam it expands obviously hence the name and all you do is put enough on to hold what you want in place let it expand let it go off and then carve it back to what you want and there's two reasons you carve it obviously it looks bloody unsightly at the moment but also, if you tried to stick silicone and substrate to that as it is, it would struggle to take because it's actually quite a smooth, shiny surface. But once you cut back 
and expose the inside of it, it's quite a rough quite a rough surface and it gives the silicone something to adhere to but we'll go into that in more detail as we go on so like I said the first bit I've already got done and what I want to do is carve this back before I put the next bit in uh, this big lump at the bottom was where I got a little bit carried away and it went wrong so we can literally just grab that and pull it out it comes off as easy as that um, once you know, once it's holding something in place, it's a nice strong bond, but you can pull it off if you need to. So, we'll move you over here. We'll start to carve. It's, it's, there's nothing, there's nothing technical about it. I mean, I've got an old kitchen knife that I use. I've got a little hobby knife, I think they call it, an exacto knife, something like that and a razor scraper that I normally end up doing more damage to myself with than anything else, and I try not to use that. But when you're carving, it is literally just carve it away with the knife like that. Pull off the chunks, bin what you don't want. Uh, the trick with when you're carving this stuff is not to carve away too much that you lose the grip on the bit that you're actually trying to hold in place. It's sort of a fine balance between that and carving enough away so that once you cover it in substrate and uh, silicon and all the rest of it, it doesn't look too unnatural. Um, I'm basically carving it away so that I can try and blend it in with the cork bark as much as I can so that once once everything is in place and it's covered up it looks like this piece of cork bark is just going from that glass to that glass without any unsightly lumps of foam and bits and pieces it should work I mean I've, I've built backgrounds in that before so I've got a rough idea of what I'm doing but it is it's all kind of done on the hoof really I mean you you get one bit done and then you think actually I'm, I'm going to change that up I'm going to put a bit more foam on put a plant pot in somewhere things like that so it is always evolving as you're doing it, I find. But uh, yeah, well, you know, we'll carry on carving and we'll see what we end up with. Now, once you've uh, the carving back to where you want it, you'll notice it looks a bit unsightly. You've got all this white, where the foam has expanded out and stuck to the glass, you've got all this white residue. But that is where tools like this ra razor scraper are invaluable because you literally just run it out the glass and it comes off and with a sort of couple of couple of goes over the glass it actually uh, gets rid of all of that residue altogether and you've got a nice clear piece of glass on the back of it you'll notice where the foam is stuck to the glass you've got a nasty unsightly white lump and once all of this is covered up that white will still be showing on the outside of the glass so all I do is get black acrylic paint paint that over job done You'll have to excuse the light in here tonight. It's a bit poor, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, once you've uh, carved away all the bits and pieces that you don't want and you've left with what you think looks good, you'll end up with something like this. You can see there's minimal, cork, uh, minimal foam up the top there. I've literally carved it away so that it follows the contour of this part of the uh, cork tube here. And it will, it's created a little platform there, so the gecko might use that as a resting place. It might not, it all depends where it, where it decides to sit and where, where it likes, where it, there might be a plant there, there might be something else there, you never know. But um, down there, you can see I've carved quite a bit away from what was originally there, and it literally follows the curve of the cork bark down onto the side. I think, like I said before, it, it will give this a more natural look once I've covered it all in substrate and it kind of resembles the cork bark itself. Now I've noticed in this, uh, within this split, there's actually another natural split in the cork bark just there. So what I'm gonna try and do is maybe get a small sliver of cork bark, wedge it in between those two bits and that way it will open this slit up without damaging the cork tube and without the need to cut any of these edges away and create something that looks unnatural. That's the plan at least. We'll see how that goes. Um, so the next bit, once you've got this and you've cleaned the glass up, you've scraped away all the residue, etc. Excuse me. 
um, it's time to stick the next piece on. Now I've already got the next piece of cork bark ready. And what I'm going to do with this one is stick it somewhere on the background like that so that it comes out at a different angle. Again, it gives the gecko different climbing opportunities, uh, a different resting point if it needs it. And all I'm going to do with this one is foam it into the background the same way that I did the other. And I'll show you exactly how I do that and just how simple it is. What we've done now is put the uh, enclosure on its back because we're going to foam this piece of cork bark in this way round. And what we need to do is basically stand the cork bark upright and foam around the base of it so that it sticks in place. If we try and stand the enclosure up at all while the foam's going off, it's just going to, uh, to drop, basically, because the foam is almost like liquid when you first put it on. And literally, all you do with the foam is hold the can upside down and squirt around the base. You just put a little bit around the base, it will hold it in position wherever you want it. That will be job done, really. So I've decided on the placement, and now it's time to do the foam job. Give the can a quick shake. The trouble with some of these things is actually getting in there to uh, foam it in the right position, but here goes nothing. You don't need to squeeze very hard, it will start coming out. And you just build a little bit up around the base, like I say. And as the foam starts to dry, sometimes you do get a little bit carried away, but uh, I don't think you can help that sometimes. And again, it doesn't matter if you squirt just a little bit too much on because when you carve it all away, you can get exactly what you want, where you want. So it's never really too much of an issue. But you just build a little bit up, remembering that it will expand and it will expand to uh, about three times the original size so you don't need to put much in and that's it what we've got to do now is leave that again for 24 hours for the foam to go off and then we can carve back this piece the next step i wanted to make was to add a bit more uh climbing opportunities for the geckos without adding more cork bark so what i've done instead is got a length of rope and actually wound that around and just held it in place with masking tape for now. But I've wound it around the cork bark, I've stuck it to various areas of the glass as you can see here. And what I'm going to do is foam that in place just in a couple of little spots so it holds it in the shape it's in at the moment. Just silicone it to the uh, cork bark itself where it's resting on it just to give it a bit of an extra hold. And uh, do the same sort of thing I did with the cork bark, once the foam has sort of set and hardened and just carve it back afterwards, uh, just to give it a bit more shape, make it look like the, uh, the rope isn't actually stuck unnaturally, if you like. And uh, yeah, just give it a, few, you know, a couple more opportunities for the geckos to rest in places and see how it looks afterwards. So we'll get on and foam that and then show you the end result. Here's the first couple of bits done. You can see I've got lumps of uh, expanding foam holding these bits of rope in place. Once they're set, we'll carve them back and then we can actually do that bit on the other side as well. I mean, we can't do it all in one because the foam has to have time to harden. So you've got to give it time to adhere to the glass to hold the rope in place properly. And then you can go on and do the other bit. But what I have done is actually siliconed this piece of rope to the inside of the cork tube and just held it in place with a bit of fishing wire there. Now the silicon should harden up properly uh, and hold the rope in place. What I will do is cover that little black line up. Once it's taken, I'll put a little bit more silicone on there, put a little bit of cocoa fiber across there to cover any unsightly marks. And then that should look pretty naturalistic, really. It should look like it's just attached to the cork bark and not like it's been stuck in place artificially. The one thing that you, you know, you, with, with these kind of builds, if you're going to be using expanding foam, silicone, things like that, it's a time consuming process. I mean, you, you can you can put this here like this, then you've got to give it 
a few, you know, at least six, eight hours to harden up before you can do the next bit. But ideally, every time you lay a piece of foam down or, or silicone, you want to give it at least 24 hours to take properly and to actually harden up fully before you move on to the next bit. So one thing you have to remember with these builds, they're not an overnight job. Once you've got everything carved back, the, uh, the foam's had time to, to settle and you've carved everything back, you end up with something like this. Um, I'll just take the camera off of here for a moment. As you can see, the rope is held in to the sides of the uh, enclosure with lumps of expanding foam. Slightly smaller one there, but the rope is also uh, silicone to the glass on the back, as you can see there, just, just for an extra hold really. Um, on the back, we've got a length of foam holding the rope in place there and it's held on in various places with those bits of silicone to stop the rope from just moving about too freely because obviously once the gecko starts to climb about on the rope there is some movement but not enough that the rope's going to swing and throw the gecko out so yeah this is what we've got this is the finished article, as you can see, there's plenty of room for the geckos to move about. They've got the option of moving up and down the cork tube and moving around the enclosure on the rope. Now, once the plants are in place, they'll also have options to climb on those as well. So there's going to be plenty of space for them to climb about and to be able to avoid each other if they need to. So from here, we get on to the next stage, which is going to be applying the silicone to the lumps of foam and covering them up with substrate. So once you've got everything in place, the next bit of the build is to cover all these exposed areas of foam with uh, silicone and then substrate. Now this is messy. There's no other way to describe it. This bit is really messy and you need a well ventilated area because it stinks to hair high heaven as well. It is nasty stuff, but it has to be done. Now, the silicone I use is this H is marine grade silicone. Basically, it's aquarium safe silicone, and you've got to make sure that it is that because it's actually safe for animals. It's you know it, it's in, it's designed for use in aquariums, so it's safe for fish. It's safe for reptiles. This is the one you want to make sure you use. Now, there's only a couple of ways to do this. You Basically, you squirt the silicone onto the foam and you can either spread it using your fingers or a paintbrush. Now, I haven't actually got a spare paintbrush, so I'm going to use my fingers. But make sure you wear rubber gloves when you do this because this silicone is horrible stuff if you get it on your fingers. It's just a sod to get off, basically. So, here we go. I shall demonstrate how I do this in a couple of places and then show you once everything's finished. Now, obviously, you can only do this a bit at a time because you've got bits of foam in different areas and you can't get all the faces at once. So, what I'll do is do everything I can get from this angle and then move on to the bit afterwards. So you literally just squirt the silicone on wherever you've got exposed areas of foam. And then use your fingers just to spread this silicone wherever you can. Now, it doesn't matter if you get it on the glass because all of that will come off afterwards. As long as you cover up all the bits of foam that you can see so that you don't get any patches of that once you've covered it all in substrate. You, you don't want to be able to see the foam, basically. And this will actually seal the foam and protect it against moisture and make it nice and uh, watertight, because obviously with the geckos you have to mist them every day. And you don't want any mist, any water penetrating in behind the foam. It shouldn't lift it off because this foam is actually waterproof but you don't want to take that risk either so you just want to make sure you get everything that you can see oh <coughs> it's like ammonia this stuff is vile 
So spread it where you can. And then once you've done that bit, the next step is to basically grab a handful of dried substrate. You've got to make sure the substrate's dry because if it's wet, it won't take to the foam properly. So make sure you've got nice dry substrate. I've actually baked this in the oven just for about half an hour just to make sure it dries out. And then you literally just pour it over the foam, uh, foam, the silicone, and press it on. Make sure you give it a nice firm press on there to make sure that it takes to the silicone. Because what you've got to do once this dries is basically turn the enclosure upside down and uh, get rid of any excess. So give it a nice firm press. Make sure it takes nicely to it. And again, all these bits on the side of the glass here that we don't need will come off once it's dried. And that's it, you basically repeat that process all over the bits of expo exposed foam you've got. And that's how you get rid of those nice nasty bits of foam and uh, end up with as natural looking a transition as you can get between the cork bark and the glass. Once the uh, silicone is dried and the cocoa fiber or peat moss or whatever you use for your substrate has actually taken to the silicone it's all dried off all you do is trim it back like uh, I showed you before with the foam with the residue of the foam it's exactly the same sort of thing you just carve away what you don't want leave what you do and you end up with something like this now I'll take you a bit closer in so you can actually see what I've done so here you can see the bits of uh, substrate that are stuck to the side of the glass that are at the top and the bottom of the long piece of cork tube are now actually covered in substrate. Uh, it's, it's slightly darker than the, than the bits of cork bark, but that's not a problem. There's going to be plants and other substrate and everything in the tank eventually, so it won't look so weird. But uh, I do have a plan to cover some of this anyway, which I'll go into into more detail in the next video. But uh, this is what you're left with. Like you say, you carve away the bits and pieces you don't want. You can make as smooth an edge as you want, or you can leave bits slightly jagged. Entirely up to you, however you want to do it. So the last piece of this particular puzzle we need to sort out is these. Where the, the other side of the foam where you've got all the substrate and everything, on the outside of the glass, you're left with this. These horrible looking bits of foam and silicone which you want to get rid of you don't want to see so the way I do it like I said earlier is just get black acrylic paint paint over it it doesn't look so nasty on the outside of the enclosure then so here we go nice and simple this is the stuff I use literally just artists acrylic paint nothing special you can go and get it from any sort of hobby craft or anywhere like that that's where I actually got this from so all I do squeeze a bit into a bowl looks rather suspicious but never mind that and just brush it on you can cover as much or as little as you want but that's all there is to it so here it is the paint has dried like you say you can it, it doesn't matter there's a few rough edges but it doesn't matter if you want to be fussy about it and tidy it up so you get nice crisp edges then you can but personally I'm not really that fussed by that. This is literally just to cover that horrible foam up. Uh, you won't see this from the sides once you're looking you know, face on into the enclosure. So it's not that important really. I mean, if I turn the enclosure around, you can see that I've covered every exposed patch of foam with the acrylic paint. Same on the other side. That's it, job done. The enclosure is now ready to be planted. And we're back. Uh, I hope you liked that video. Part two will be the actual planting of the enclosure. So 
That will come in the not too distant future. It's gonna take a little while to sort out because I've got to get all the plants. I've got to you know, experiment with a few bits and pieces and hopefully it will work out the way I want it to. Um, unfortunately, I was gonna be getting plants at uh, the Northern Invert Show and the Doncaster Reptile Show, but as most of us in this community will already know, the Northern Invert Show has been postponed until what, October, I believe it is. Even BTS has been put back until 12th of July. Uh, there's no updates on Doncaster yet, but let's face it, it's either going to get postponed or cancelled. It's, it's inevitable, really. Um, it's a shame that the government seemed to be systematically banning anything fun, but... Um, it can't be helped, it's one of these things. I mean, in all seriousness, I hope everybody out there is safe and well, and you know, I hope that we will remain that way too. And if they do impose this uh, lockdown for 12 weeks, I can only suggest that you basically inform all of your family to sub to my channel and watch all my videos. You know, why not? Anyway, enough of this. Enough of that, um, like I say, part two of this build will be coming in the not too distant future. I was hoping to film another cycling video, but we'll see how that goes with everything that's going on. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and I'll see you next time.